Good morning. How are you? How are you? Oh, that's a little better. So this whole change thing, hmm, we're going to talk about that today. And we love change, yes? Yes, sir. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to thank uh, Tiara and Denisha. They take such good care of not only, the, not only of everybody, but the speakers, you know, in, uh, directly. So I, I appreciate them and their support. I want to thank my team in the back there. Uh, I couldn't do what I'm doing without them. And you all know what that, that's like. And, and Dr. Brian, really appreciate meeting you last night and getting, uh, you know, getting connected and really serving this community. I'm excited about it. I've been, I've been out of uh, the, the chiropractic realm too long, even though I practice every day. And that's when, when I spoke in uh, Vegas a couple years ago, was, people were coming up to me, are you a chiropractor? Yes, I'm a chiropractor. Um, but the cool thing is that, that I've, and, and that's what we're going to talk about and I'm going to share this morning is that, you know, I found that we, at least I was limiting this, this power, this force, this, this beautiful art and science and philosophy we call chiropractic to just my patients. Because what, what I'm going to share with you today was that I, I tapped into it in a way that allowed me to use this innate thing, these supernatural laws, this, this force that you use every day into every area of my life. And so, so we're going to talk about this, this, this idea of change and, 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 you know, how you are actually looking to do this. When a patient comes into your office, uh, you know, you're looking to create some type of change. And we know that when you start working with them and adjusting them, they always feel better immediately, right? Not so much. Sometimes there's no change, sometimes they feel worse. So the key is that, that we're, we're playing and we're with this dance of initiating this cause and effect response. And ultimately, this change that we're after, you don't really have anything to do with. Meaning, let's take the stress, let's take the burden off of ourselves, say I gotta force this change, I gotta control this change, I gotta manage this change. When you adjust and remove interference, What's causing the change? Right? This force, this power is perfect. You don't, you don't have to help it. Right? You don't have to add anything into that, that person. What you're doing is removing interference. And what I sort of tapped into was this sense that, that hey, the nervous system doesn't know the stress that I'm in right now. It doesn't know that I'm burdened by physical pain or emotional pain. It can't tell the difference whether I'm really stressed out because my organs are malfunctioning or I'm really stressed out because my practice isn't growing and my patients are quitting and my relationships are struggling. It doesn't know the difference. And just like you know, when someone comes in, they taught you just you sort of give them space, you give them time to to sort of dump on you, you know, get that rapport going, get that communication going, let him, letting them know they're, they're in the right place, you know, you're, you're open to hear about their symptoms, but in the back of your head, what are you after? What do you want to do? Adjust them to fix the cause, right? Because you know they're embraced in their symptoms, they're immersed in their symptoms, the, the pain and the, and the struggle and everything that they're dealing with is all that they can be focused on. This nervous system is really good <laughs> about getting our attention around those things. But in the back of your mind, you know that if you're really going to help them, you've got to remove the what? Remove the interference. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to say it's the exact same thing. Whether you're, you have, have physical pain and symptoms or there's emotional and spiritual pain and symptoms, it's the exact same thing. And so I've taken this message very beautiful, very simple, very powerful message into the corporate world. And pretty much just said same, same thing. I let people dump on me why their businesses aren't growing, why their, their customers are quitting, why their, their income streams are failing. And I said, how do you feel about that? I feel depressed. I'm, I'm, I'm stressed out. I'm, I'm angry. I'm, I'm, I'm dissatisfied. You know, the dis is in life. Discouraged, dissatisfied, disappointed, you know. I said, okay. Well, let's fix the cause of that. 
Are you open to finding out what's really going on? What's really behind your symptoms? Same conversation I have with patients. Are you interested in really identifying where your headaches are coming from? Why you're constipated? Why you can't fall asleep? Okay, but you make my pain go away, right? <laughs> right, doesn't the conversation always come back to that? Because our wonderful, beautiful nervous system is really behind it all, right? It's got, those, it's got this idea of <sighs> trying to bring to our attention something that's not right, something that's out of balance, something that we need to take, take control of. So I call this, I, I, and we're gonna just sort of kick around this idea of, uh, here's our first slide. I always like to start with, with, this, with this little quote, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're gonna talk about the Super RCA. See, sometimes interference shows up in all kinds of different ways. <laughs> so as soon as our crack staff with my PowerPoint comes up, this, this idea of, we're going to talk about this mind, I call it the mind prison. And the mind prison is something that uh, we all have. And, and I had mine really early in life. It was sort of interesting, you know, um, how I got exposed to mine, I was a football player, and uh, in that in high school, you really form your identity on, you know, how people see you, what you do, and everything. So I, I, my identity was running around with this little football and scoring touchdowns, and then everybody liked me. You know, well, I had a real bad injury that stopped me from doing that, so I went from this football star to nothing. How'd that make me feel? Yeah, not so good. And so, because my identity was associated with what I did, and this is pretty, pretty common, I don't care if you're in high school or what's going on right now, right? This, this sense of, um, I didn't know who I was. So I had a lot of those, those uh, uh, the mind prison emotions, fear, worry, stress, anger, blaming, you know? And so my mother bought me this book called The Power of Positive Thinking. You ever hear that one? And so I read this, her goal, God bless her, uh, was to help, you know, motivate me, you know, get, get me out of this slump, make me feel better, you know. And so I read this book, and what I saw, and I perceived without a shadow of a doubt, was that what you think about, you bring about. Right? <laughs> well, my thoughts weren't real pleasant back then. I didn't have a whole lot of good thoughts, so I was in torment, in my mind prison, thinking everything I thought was going to happen to me. Not a, not a good place to be. And so, uh, through <laughs> just, you know, direction from the divine and uh, uh, some back problems I also had, I found chiropractic. And so I just, you know, sum it up by saying chiropractic not only saved my spine, it saved my mind. Because in chiropractic school, I, I learned about what we're going to talk about today. This, this nervous system thing. This nervous system that controls and regulates not every cell, tissue, and organ of your body, but every thought you have, every, every feeling that you experience, all your beliefs, behaviors, habits. So when we talk about creating change, let's, let's talk about where it actually happens, okay? And so when we look at this prison of our mind, it's... Uh, <laughs> Maybe has some, some lower energy to it, but the key is you have the key to unlock it. And that's what we're going we're gonna to sort of kick around this morning. How to unlock this prison of your mind and, and move forward. Understanding that, that your greatest gift and your mortal enemy all are in the same component. All in the same uh, source. And that source is what? Your nervous system. <laughs> okay, so we we <laughs> were trained in our offices to to just learn about the nervous system and how everything that we're doing is forced or, or is based on understanding it and freeing it up so it can do what it can heal and repair. So we we know we live our lives through our nervous system, but at the same time, it's when it it's interfered with and becomes malfunction 
how do we feel? Not so good. Physical problems, disorders, disease. So in the same way, it, it's responsible for healing and repairing physically. It's also responsible for healing and repairing emotionally and spiritually. And like I said, it doesn't differentiate those two things. So our nervous system holds the key in both aspects, in both components. You, you, this idea of, of growth, this idea of, of healing and, and maturity, it's all in the same thing. And so looking at the levels. So just today, I'm just to maybe introduce some of these concepts. So we have this nervous system, but we also have this consciousness. And we've identified three levels. In, in the quantum emergence system, we look at three levels, surface, sub, and super. I just like the SU thing going on there, right? And we're going to talk about this, and we're going to talk about how each one of these plays a role, plays a part in creating and dismantling your mind prison. And right now, think of your mind prison as uh, of every, every time you have those symptoms, fear, worry, depression, right, anger, something that doesn't feel good emotionally. And you've all had those. That's part of your mind prison. So surface co or super conscious sort of understands this, and we're going to finish with that, sort of bringing it all around. But first, I just want to take a look at a couple of components of the first two. So your surface conscious. Here's the thing. <laughs> Your surface conscious is probably your, your most overworked organ. How many of you spend most of your time, time trying to figure out, trying to solve, trying to deal with change, handle change, create change with your surface conscious, with all your logic and your training and, and your good intention and your passion, right? All, all, all your education and, and, and your skill sets. And, and it's like, whoa, <laughs> so much burden for this little guy, for the, your little neocortex. So here's the first thing, creating change and dealing with change has absolutely nothing to do with your logic and your reason and your understanding and how smart you are and your doctor degree or your CA degree, okay? It has a whole different purpose and that's part of it, getting information. But just sort of leave it at that for now, <laughs> okay? So uh, think of it, think of the, the surface conscious sort of like the captain of the ship. Who's calling the shots in the ship? The captain, right? But who carries out that order? The crew. Everybody else. Captain just sort of sits back. So it's essentially the same thing. When you make a decision, when you say, I'm deciding to change, it is a non-negotiable aspect of my life. Cool, great, your captain, surface conscious has to go there. It makes the decision, but then let it go. <laughs> Step back and now engage the other aspects of your consciousness to make that change. Leave your little neocortex out of the picture, right? Try, stop trying to figure it out, control it, manage it, get more systems, more strategy, more tools, techniques, gadgets, gadgets. Blah. They're all good and you need them. And that's why you come to these things to learn, <laughs> to create that change, right? Nobody's here because you were spending thousands of dollars and taking away, you know, time from practice to stay exactly the same. You're here to, you know, create change. But let's talk about how you actually do that. Let's talk about how you actually, you know, uh, uh, manifest this. Just like in your office, it's not the adjustment that's creating the change. The adjustment's simply a tool. That's why you can, how many different types of adjustments do we have? And they all work. Because that's not creating the change. It's the power that's already in the body that's creating the change. And that's the exact same thing. If you want to make more money, have more time, more love, more freedom, more joy, more fulfilling relationships, the thing that's already inside you manages that, handles it. And it does it perfectly. It does it beautifully. It does it all the time. Just like healing happens all the time. Right? It's a natural process. But see, be, the difference is we got this tangible and intangible. You know, it's real easy to think of how a bone sitting on a place interferes with a structure and, and impedes nerve flow. Right? But 
How does a thought, how does a belief affect my life? How does changing those thoughts and belief create change? That's sort of the question. That's sort of what we're talking about today. So it's not the surface conscious. It's the subconscious. But not really how you think. So we're going to play with that too. Because in personal development, the subconscious takes a big <laughs> takes a big hit. Let's say that, you know, uh, 75%, and this is neuroscience research, 75% of the people out there won't ever even hear what we're talking about in this room today. They'll never even have this conversation. And to me, it's tragic. To me, it's, it's the passion I do what I do because there's so much, just like there's so much ignorance about chiropractic and, and our philosophy, there's just as much ignorance about what's really creating <laughs> and what's really causing the issues of your life and how to really change it and how to make a difference, right? S s most people are stuck in their head. I need more information, I mean, nor, I need, I need, need more uh, you know, tools and techniques and strategies to fix things. I gotta go to counseling, I need some coping skills, I need anger management. No, you don't. Those are techniques that if, you know, they help, great. But where's it coming from? What's the cause of those things? Your nervous system just didn't say, hmm, I think I'll be really angry today. <laughs> I think I'll be really depressed. I'm gonna take myself out of this game of life, right? It just doesn't come out of nowhere. So there's a lot of stuff in the subconscious, but it's the crew, right? It carries things out. So 75% of the people don't even get the distinction between those two minds. We just talked about, you got three minds, surface, sub, and uh, super. Most people live. 25% got, th they understand. Yes, I've heard about that. Yeah, I, I, I watched The Secret. I read that book, you know, Power of Beliefs and all this stuff, right? And so now, they want to um, change their beliefs. <laughs> now they start blaming their beliefs for everything. Don't blame your beliefs, right? It's all part of your nervous system. So the key with this function the reason we embrace this concept is because we embrace, we, 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 we respect, and we appreciate what your nervous system is trying to do. Keep you safe. Period. End of story. It's all it's trying to do. Keep you safe. Okay? So here's, if you're taking notes, here's, here's like one, you know, one bullet point. I'll try to point those out when I go through it. That, that resonate with the audiences that I speak with and, you know, creates that little, huh, you know. And this one basically says that um, the only reason you don't have what you want in life right now is because your heart doesn't think it's safe for you. Oh, well, how can more time, more money, more freedom, more peace, more love, more joy be bad? So that's your subconscious. Because we know neuroscience, right, says 95% of everything you think and say and do throughout your day from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed is governed by your subconscious. Do this for me. Everybody just raise your right hand, bring it right up, right hand above your head. Okay, look now. Do you think I was going to, like, pick on you? Do you know? <laughs> People just don't like to raise their hand in public. Anyways, so did... So the question is, did you do that with your conscious mind or your subconscious mind? How many say you did it consciously? Okay. How many say, I did, no, it was subconscious. How many like, I don't know where he's going with this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's the thing. If it was your conscious mind, you would have, you, it would have had to have said, okay, levator scapula, rotate the glenohumeral joint, uh, anterior deltoid brain. Did you do that? Okay, so. How'd you raise your arm? Who was really in control? Right? So, and that's sort of how it is. You think, <laughs> you would argue probably that you decided to come here today. You would really could put up a good, you know, debate that you decided with all your logic and intellect to come to the Parker Seminars. Wrong. <laughs> Nothing you think, nothing you do, nothing you feel happens unless your subconscious says it's okay. 
Oh, and including growing your practice, making more money, having deep, fulfilling relationships. So once again, the only reason you don't have what you want is because your subconscious doesn't think it's safe for you. Dr. Matt, this doesn't make sense. Exactly. Nobody said your subconscious mind was logical, reasonable, or rational. It has a completely different operating system, totally distinct. The hardest, <laughs> and this is why I have such passion for you guys, because this is where I was at. The, 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 the educated mind is the toughest to get this. Because you spent your whole life trying to fix and control and manipulate and change your life with your knowledge. Let's see if it's not true, right? That, that's part, partly why <laughs> we're all sort of stuck in this game of learning strategies, techniques, and, and, and systems to create change in our practice and our lives. Beautiful. All I'm suggesting today is that you use those strategies, techniques, new gadgets and gizmos and education to all this in a context, in an environment that's safe for the part of you that's going to drive the thing. Does that make sense? Okay, so we, I mean, we're, just, we're just playing with it. So here's, so once again, let's keep it simple. This, this idea, nervous system, just, it's so complex we could never even begin to imagine understand. On one hand, but on the other hand, really simple, really elegant. It does this safety thing by keeping you the same. Okay, Dr. Chesson, how many of you were in his class yesterday? You talked about this idea of adaptation. Beautiful, right? You step out in Arizona, live in Arizona, right? It's really hot, so my nervous system says, "Huh, really hot. Let's sweat." Okay, in Alaska, you have oh, this is really cold. Hmm, let's shiver. But the idea is that it's temporary. It's designed to adapt temporary, not permanently, okay? That's the physiological side of things. And so what we know about your nervous system is that physiologically, the number one drive, the thing that it doesn't have to think about, the thing that you don't have to make a little note, your day timer, uh, make sure your nervous system keeps me alive, okay? <laughs> Does it all by itself is survival. And there's a couple of camps out there. Some say it's personal survival. Others say it's survival to the species, like you're procreating and all that stuff. Either way, physiologically, your nervous system says, I got to keep you alive at all costs. Period. End of story. It's like the terminator. Right? It's programmed to keep you alive, keep your heart beating, lungs breathing, digest your food, and none of it deals with your logic. You don't have to understand any of it. Thank God, right? So here's the key. Here's another second little bullet point you want to get in the exact same way, in the exact same way, physically, physiologically, your nervous system is driven to keep you alive, keep you safe by keeping you alive. It's driven psychologically to make sure you behave consistent with the belief you have about yourself. Period, end of story, okay? So here's the thing, whatever belief, so whatever your subconscious thinks about you <laughs> is what generates those thoughts, those feelings, those behaviors, those habits, that patterns, because it will not let you think, act, behave outside of this perception it already has about you, even if that means keeping you sick, <laughs> broke, alone, depressed. Well, Dr. Matt, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Exactly. We never said it did. All's we're saying <laughs> is that your belief, again, you step back, <laughs> right? Your, your nervous system is just keeping you safe. It doesn't think, it doesn't know if you're standing on the, on the cliff of, the, you know, looking over the Grand Canyon, right? Or somebody just put a gun to your head. What's your heart going to do? Right? It doesn't know. The same way, it doesn't know if you just got that foreclosure notice or you're going through bankruptcy or you got an, a letter from your attorney about uh, your spouse is, like, checking out. How does that feel? Both are perception of threat. So why is it so hard to create change? 
Why do we have great intentions and great knowledge and great skill and great support and great teams and people around us? But things you are in the Groundhog Day, things keep staying the same. We make a little shift, but then it's right back again. Because you've got this thing called the mind prison that says, I will not allow anything new and different into their life that doesn't equal how they think about themselves at a subconscious level. You follow? So hopefully we're just sort of giving you some, some you know, little, I, I, one of the things I'm known for, they call me the subconscious whisperer because I've developed some skills and talents and abilities to talk to your subconscious in a language that it can understand. So that the key, you know, we talk about alignment all day in our offices. It's the exact same principle. In order to create healing, repair, and restoration in your body, you need alignment. In order to create healing and restoration and repair in your life, in your finances, your relationships, and anything that's going on, you need to create alignment between your head and your heart, the surface and sub. Okay? And this process, actually, the cool thing is just as simple as getting an adjustment. You first got to find out where the what is, where the subluxation. So we're not talking about subluxations of your spine. We're talking about subluxations of your soul. Same difference, same nervous system. No distinction between physical threat, psychological threat. It sees the same thing because it says, I, I got my, my operating system. My number, my number one command is to keep them safe, right? You got the whole physiological thing. But psychologically, it's got this idea that if something changes in your life that doesn't match up with, with who you think you are, you'll cease to exist. It's life-threatening. Although the conscious comes up, the surface conscious comes up with great ideas, great strategies, this really makes sense that we do this. This really fits the model that I'm thinking of for my practice. Logically, this is the best choice to make to grow the practice. All the while, you've got a whole different operating system going on there saying, no, nope, you make too much money, you're going to feel burdened. Nope, you don't trust yourself with all that money. Remember the last time you did that, you got burned? We're going to keep you safe from all that emotional pain you had the last time, right? And that's the other thing. We'll talk about a little bit about emotions. The, uh, the, the, the <laughs> notice, the awareness is whenever you, you do experience those, we call them low energy states. That's all it is. It's a low energy state. Do, there, we don't have negative emotions in our community. <laughs> we have low energy states. And, and, and that's the exact same thing as having a physical pain over here. We, you have two choices, right? You, you have some pain. And you can get really mad. You can get really upset. This leg cramps. really pissing me off, right? I'm so mad at my leg. <laughs> I'm so mad at my symptom. Stop it. I'm going to rub it and massage it. And <sighs> or you can come from a higher consciousness and say, thank you so much, leg. I appreciate you bringing to my attention there's something out of what? Something out of balance. Something out of alignment. How many different reasons causes could there be for my leg cramp, right? A bunch. In the same way over here, man, that damn attorney took my PH, P, uh, PI check, <laughs> right? <laughs> my patients aren't getting it. They keep quitting. I bought this marketing package and it doesn't work. And I feel angry and I feel disappointed and di right Go, okay see on the surface it makes so much sense and we always retreat to our logic to save us right but we can step back and say okay I'm not feeling really good right now I got a symptom going on here and here, here's another one of those little points so what do we have three so the other little point is that that whenever you feel those types of symptoms, man, you're worried, what's going on? The part of you that's generating that emotion, the part of you that's caused the emotion, has no flipping clue what you just heard, saw, or experienced. No idea. Meaning it doesn't know what money is. It doesn't know what patients are. It has no idea what marketing is. But there was an association. Okay? What did we say? 
this idea of beliefs causing these things. So, so I think we're at point four. I'm sort of trying to remember as we go. Contrary to personal growth, public opinion, and the books you read and your training, and all these things about your subconscious, you know, they'll, they'll try and tell. Those. So this is the 25% I'm talking to, right? 75% have no clue what a subconscious is, never will hear about belief systems and how they, how they dictate thoughts, words, behaviors. The other 25% gets it. And so now they play this game. Okay, it's all about the subconscious. i got to change my belief. So when he talked about, hey, you got a limiting belief around money. You, the reason why your practice is failing is because you have a limiting belief around, uh, around patients. The reason, all the, you know, the cause and effect, much better conversation than cause and effect thinking your external reality is causing your pain. Much better uh, conversation that something inside me has triggered that response, right? Because if it was this, if it was the economy, if it was the government, if it was health care, insurance, and not getting paid or anything else, if that truly were the cause of how you feel, every human being would have the exact same emotion. Right? Perception, we'll talk about that. So the key is here, you don't, you don't have one belief. One belief. That's why it makes it so simple to like create change, <laughs> right? You don't have to worry about all those other beliefs. You got one belief. What do I believe about me, right? Ties in perfectly with the neuroscience that says your number one physiological drive and psychological drive rather is to make sure you think and behave and act consistently with what your belief system thinks about you, okay? Secondarily, you only have one set of belief systems. So, so now you're thinking, <laughs> cool, so how do I find out what my subconscious thinks about me, right? Yeah, so the quantum emergence system is all about that. And we're going we're gonna, to, you know, kick that around a little bit. So understand that. Second thing, right, so, so you only have one belief system, and you, they're not limiting or supporting. Another conversation that comes up in this, in this discussion, in this genre, when you start moving in that direction, personal growth, personal transformation, they'll start talking about your beliefs, right? First thing, you only have one belief. Second thing, it doesn't know if it's limiting or supporting. That's a judgment that your logic and intellect has placed on it. Your subconscious is just trying to keep you safe. It doesn't know that you want more money, more time, more freedom, more love, more joy, and deeper fulfilling relationships. It doesn't know that. But somewhere along the line, it picked up an idea or a theme about you that says this stuff isn't safe for you. Okay? The system and the quantum emergence system, we talk about how that actually happens. And now it's a bigger conversation around energy, you know, DNA, and genetics, and all kinds of cool stuff. Simple part, one belief, what I think about me. And creating change is all about getting an accurate self-perception. What's true about you? What's your true identity? Okay. That's the safety. So understand, creating that change, creating an environment that invites change has to be in that realm. Because everything ends, <laughs> starts and ends at the subconscious level not your head. Right? So in our system, the whole key is let's create alignment here. Let's make sure the subconscious is on board. Now, tear it up. Go get your training. In, well, and I'm going to say too, you already have pretty much everything you'll ever need to know, right? The, the, the ongoing training and support, new, you know, the, the latest breakthroughs and technology, all things, these are great. And, and implement those that resonate with you in your head as well as your heart. What's, what's the ultimate goal? Your subconscious really doesn't care <laughs> how it keeps you safe as long as you're safe. All right? So another little analogy to sort of break this down, I call it the ant and the elephant. And, and so, so the two, you got basically two mind prisons. One is your ant, okay? And these are, these are just the thoughts you have. How many thoughts a day do you think you have? How many? About 60,000, research says about 50 to 60,000 a day, right? I don't know, they were really bored and they just, there's, there's, another, there's another one, they just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how they came up with it, but whatever. We'll go with it. There's a lot, okay? So the key with this is your conscious mind prison says, 
all, it, and this is just a function of your nervous system, by the way, right? It's just like your heart beating, your stomach digesting. It's not you, right? You are not your thoughts. You are not your beliefs. You are not your emotions. This is your nervous system doing its job. God bless it, okay? But if you didn't know that, if you were sort of stuck in I, I, my thoughts, well, well, 90% of those thoughts are the exact same thoughts you had the day before. Just sort of keeps you. And, and 80% of those thoughts are negative and non-supportive. Mind prison, right? It's designed to be like that because your conscious mind is always looking for what could go wrong, will go wrong, and might go wrong, right? <laughs> it's always sort of taking the facts and measuring and, you know, all this stuff for the main goal to keep you safe. So wh why, why do we talk about mind mastery? One of the first things we introduce in the system is mind mastery. <laughs> How to control those thoughts. Regain in the book, the Bible says, you know, take captive all of your thoughts, all of the time, because it's keep going. Remember, you know, it's not you. It's just, oh, interesting, nervous system. Why did you just think that? Super conscious <laughs> can observe your nervous system in action. We're going to talk about that. The key is that, that if you think you're your nervous system, if you think you're your mind, your thoughts, eh, that's one of the main symptoms of being trapped in your mind prison. The elephant, now, on the other hand, that's really, like I said, where everything happens. Uh, this is 400 billion cycles per second. This is, this is all the aspects of who you think you are, why you do what you do, all your behaviors, driven by the elephant. So just based on sheer size here, where do you want to spend most of your time in creating change? Okay. <laughs> so that's basically where we start. We work with your elephant. What's your elephant thinking? Why is it doing what it's doing? Oh, we already know why, to keep you safe. Why do you think it's so safe for me to be broke and alone and poor and sick? It has its reasons. <laughs> and its reason is pure. It's, it's a really good reason. To keep you what? Yeah. So you can, oh, now you say, thank you. So it disperses the energy of like beating up on your subconscious and beating up on your belief system. They're not limiting or supporting. They don't know what that means. It just has an agenda. And it's very, very committed to that agenda. Just like it's very committed to keep you alive, it's very committed to make sure you stay safe by staying sane. Okay? So let's, we're going to, with the time that we have, we're going to talk about, I, th it's called the four parts of the mind prison. So I just want to bring this in a little bit, and we have a really cool little, little exercise we're going to do to expose you to your subconscious. So the four parts of the mind prison. Think of the mind prison like this, this energetic force field, this invisible thing that if you knew, if you saw it, you'd say, oh, jeez, that's why I'm not making any money. That's why everybody's quitting. That's why I'm always arguing with my, fit, my kids and my family, right? If you knew this, you'd, your surface would jump in and fix it, right? So we're exposing the four parts of it, memory, emotion, meaning. And we're going to tie in the nervous system so that you know this is not theory. This is not something that just, you know, theoretical and, you know, maybe kick it around. Our system helps identify each part of the brain because it has functions. So first part, amygdala. Think of this as the general, right? What's it protecting you from? <laughs> the enemy of change. It sees change as a threat, right? Just like standing on the edge is a threat, making more money, having deep, fulfilling relationships, having this practice of your dreams, it doesn't make any distinction. All it's saying is if you change, you're going to die. we got to stop you from that. So the key with this part, it's able to override. It's so committed, it's so in tune, it's so efficient that can it override your neocortex. It can override your logic, your reason, your rationale. That's why, this is why you don't do what you know you should do. And, and you do things you know you shouldn't, right? Did you call that patient? Can I just check in how they're doing? Did you handle that financial upset with that patient? I'm not really sure. Did you call your team meeting every night? Did you, you know, set that stage as a leadership in your office? No, I know I should, but amygdala. 
Why, Dr. Matt? Let's go ask it. <laughs> Why is it so important you don't do what you know you should do and you can't stop doing what you know is harming you? Okay? Second part of your mind prism, hypothalamus. It's the chemist, right? Harmonizes you with your environment. Seeks resonating frequencies. frequencies. Now this is you know, sort of expanded. We can talk about law of attraction, different things. But the, this, the idea is these emotions, right? Your emotions, how do you feel? Your emotions are the greatest gift God has ever given you. And that's sort of the irony of this whole process is that how many people spend a lot of time and money on counseling and therapy and medications to make their what? Go away. <laughs> their emotional pain go away, right? Versus listening. It's the same one like you just said, physical pain and emotional. Your nervous system is just trying to say, hey, <laughs> something's out of alignment. You are not congruent with who God created you to be. You are not congruent with the power that's in you to produce wealth, Deuteronomy 8.18. You got everything in you to make all the abundance, all the success, all the prosperity you would ever think of, you already have, and more. It's in you. Why is it not showing up in the thing? Right? And you're nervous. If you look at your volume right now, if you look at your income right now, if, you, if you're concerned and stressed, about the nature of the insurance industries right now. Once again, the part of you that's causing all those feelings has no clue what any of that is. It just perceives threat. It perceives this idea is threatening to you, which simply means you're not in alignment with this idea that you can produce. Success comes from inside of you, right? Just like you know, healing comes from inside your patients. Everything you want outside comes from inside you when you remove the interference. And if it's not, if you're blocked, if there's, if there's restraints or constraints, you feel bad, period. So let's sum up all your hurtful, painful, lower energetic feelings and emotions into one thing. You're out of alignment with who you are. You don't think. You're capable of success and prosperity and abundance and everything else, right? Which may be in perfect alignment with this belief you have about yourself. Nobody ever said it was accurate. In fact, that's, that's your biggest clue right there. If you feel bad about all these things, that's why. <laughs> You're out of alignment with the truth, right? This is why we call this, this course the power of truth. What's the truth about you? You already have everything you need. If it's not showing up, you're not feeling really good about it, there's interference. Let's go find it and remove it. It's really that simple. It really is. Just like in your office, okay? So, next one. Hippocampus Navigator, right? Determines the importance of incoming information by comparing its relevance. So, so here's <laughs> the part of you that, okay, you've had an exciting time at Parker Seminars. You learned tons of stuff. You're motivated. You're ready to go. You're gonna have team meetings. You're gonna get this new thing. You're gonna do all this. And you're, right, little spike. And then what? We call it the roller coaster. Thank you, hippocampus, to save the day to get me right back to where I was before. I appreciate you being so diligent and keeping me the same. Okay? Dude, that's its job. Those, those winds of change blow you off course. Your hippocampus gets you right back into your, the level of income and patient volume and intimacy, just like that. Does a great job, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> but here's the thing. All parts of your mind prison will be just as focused, just as diligent, just as committed at a higher level of success and fulfillment and joy and abundance. If we do what? Remove the interference, okay? Last part, don't you love her? Okay, so your thalamus is the receptionist. <laughs> what does your receptionist do? It's the gatekeeper, right? <laughs> Doesn't let anything in. Nobody gets past that, that, that gatekeeper. All you, all you CAs, right? Nobody's talking to the doctor unless it comes through me. Okay? So you're all 
of wonderful, amazing uh, thalamuses. So in the same way, your thalamus makes sure, makes sure nothing gets in into your consciousness, into your being, into who you are that doesn't line up with who you think you are. So you can hear a lot of motivation. You can hear what I'm talking about right now. You all hear the same thing. Your thalamus is this filter that's filtering it, filtering it out. I agree with that. I don't agree with that. Yes, okay, that's good, right? It only allows in what is not threatening to you, right? <laughs> And if for some reason something gets past it, your little receptionist doesn't do its job, how do you feel? A little knot in your stomach, lump in your throat, sweaty palms. Could you, your nervous system knows now. Ooh, ooh. What's the most threatening thing to your mind prison? Something that challenges <laughs> the idea that it has about you? Really? I can't be successful? Really? It's that easy? <laughs> really? I can have fulfilling relationships? Ugh. Oh. Your thalamus is like, oh, something got through. And it's, even though it's true, and you know it's true, at some level you know what I'm saying is true because you wouldn't be here. We, we, this is this process. We desire change. We're motivated by change. But we've got this nervous system that's our mortal enemy in, the, in, in its programming. It's, it's simply a computer, right? A wonderful, amazing, you know, miraculous computer. But it's the number one thing that prevents us change. It's the number one thing that keeps us alive and safe and healthy. It's also the number one thing that prevents us from really creating the life of our dreams. Okay? So your thalamus is the receptionist to... life. So let's do this. I'm going to get you up for a second. I have no idea the time that we, we have, but I wanted to give this. It's a, it's, a, it's a technique. It's a tool. It's very simple, very powerful, and uh, you can all use it. And the key is that all we're asking, we're, it's a way to communicate. It's a way to talk to your subconscious and say, hey, are you okay with this? Do you feel safe with what I just thought or said? Okay. It, again, it doesn't know what you just said, it doesn't understand what money is. It doesn't understand what patients are. It doesn't understand who your, you know, uh, dream spouse or your soulmate. It had no clue what those. It only makes sense here. All we're asking is, does this idea, does the energy that this thought or word embodies, is it safe or is it a threat? Okay. Um, uh, Masiro Emoto did a study, it's called Messages in Water. How many of you are familiar, familiar with that one? Okay, very cool, right? Just took words, just words, put on a, on a piece of paper, f uh, put it facing a glass of water, just tap water, right? And, and the words range from everything from I love you to peace and joy and happiness to I hate you, I wish you would die. High expansive, energetic words, low contractive words. But just words next to water, H2O, no carbon unit, H2O, hydrogen, oxygen. Set it overnight. Next day, took, just re sampled it. To the molecules, they look like little stop signs to start with, right? The molecules exposed to positive words. Just exposed to a word printed on a piece of paper blew up like, like these brilliant, colorful snowflakes. Very intricate, elaborate designs. If you, you know, Google it and they all kinds of pictures, right? The words, the water, Exposed to these lower energetic words, distorted, dark, cloudy, lost structure, 80% water, right? What are you thinking? What are you speaking over you, over your practice, your patients, your money, your relationships, right? So there's energy. So that's what we're saying. Your subconscious doesn't know what you just said, but it perceives, is it a threat? to me, or am I okay with that, okay? And so you can use this test, you know, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show it to you. And you, and here's the other thing. Your subconscious only knows right now. It doesn't know 
past, it doesn't know future. Those are only concepts that the neocortex has constructed. It only knows right now, what's happening right now. Am I safe right now? Am I threatened right now? So anytime you say an affirmation, and here's the other, this is, this is why, <coughs> this is why you test your affirmations. University of Ottawa in Canada did a study on affirmations. And so they had a bunch of people just saying, oh, money comes easily and my practice is growing and patients love me and blah, 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 right? You know, all these good things that your head thinks of and that you want to start speaking and retraining and reprogramming with, well, they did a study and said, because it didn't always work, right? So we, we started questioning this. Why do some people say affirmations that work and some people don't? Some people do visualizations and it does. Some people medi meditation, visual, all these great tools and techniques if your subconscious is threatened by it. I don't care, you could put a picture of 50 million people in your practice. If your subconscious is threatened by a bunch of people and volume in your practice, you ain't getting it. I don't care how often you look at it. You can force it and pound it in there. That's called brainwashing, right? <laughs> and it might click and it might hit sometime. But man, we're talking about trying to create immediate, permanent, and meaningful change. So let's do it in congruence and alignment with our head and heart. What do you need, heart? What are you safe about? What environment do you need to? Because I, I would like these things. Uh, what do you think? So that's all we're doing. So when you form an affirmation, form it in present tense right now. So I just want you to get a feel of this test. So which way is north? <laughs> He's pointing up. <laughs> okay, we've got, I got some signs that north is this way. So if you would please clear your lap, stand with me, face to the north. And ladies, if you've got some heels on, you may want to just take those off, okay? This is called the sway test. It's a very simple, elegant, powerful test to simply ask subconscious, hey, are you safe with this thing or not? You don't muscle test your spouse. You don't, this doesn't make life decisions because your subconscious doesn't know what any of that is. Anyways, all you're saying, you know, can I take the next step with this thing, right? And so hands down your side and a positive test you will feel a pull energetically, a little sway forward. A negative test or a threatening idea or thought, you'll feel a little push backwards, okay? So forward, green light, good, safe, backward. I, now keep them open, yeah, keep your eyes open, that's fine, okay? And so let's just play with it. So what I'll have you do, you can think it, you can say it out loud, just say, my name is, your, your, your first name, my name is, and get a feel of a forward or backward sway. Forward simply means that, yes, your name is safe. Because it doesn't even know your name. I did this test with, and it's like the, the, she kept going backwards, right? What's the problem? Well, everybody used her nickname, right? She never used her given name, right? His nickname. So we use her nickname for her. So get a sense of that, okay? And now say a false name, something that's not true. And you should sense a little, little pull or push back. Let me see everybody's head for a little bit. Always face north. Yeah, it creates that energetic, positive energetic field. And now just try a couple things with, just say yes. Three, if, if, if you didn't see much there, uh, a, if you didn't move at all, it's just sort of neutral, no threat, no real safety. W when we talk about, hey, I want to set a goal, um, I want to, you know, start speaking this over my life, my practice, my patients, my spouse, my kids, uh, then you're looking to go forward because, and you'll sense too, a stronger pull, your subconscious is like, yeah, <laughs> I really like what you just said. You know, some people, they fall backwards, they stay the hell away from what you just said, right? Okay, so just say yes three times to get that feel, yes, 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 again, forward, no, no. No, you should feel a little sway backwards. All right. Everybody get it. Everybody experience and sense that test. Anybody not? Yeah, beautiful question. All right, give yourselves a round of applause. Excellent. <laughs> All right, so... So yeah, ultimately that's what we're always after, right? How to move, move and change stuff. So here's, here's where we're gonna finish up with. Um, superconscious. 
this is a part of your consciousness that um, has no capacity, has no ability. These, these negative thoughts, these hurtful, painful feelings are completely absent at this level of your being. There is no threat. There is no um, situation or circumstance or event that can really threaten this level of your consciousness. We're going to say that there's, there's a lot of, um, in the personal development world, there's a lot of different uh, uh, analogies or acronyms for this level of consciousness, your higher self, your true self, uh, your, your pure identity. Um, it's a level of consciousness that, that surpasses and is outside of your nervous system. Right? In the Bible, it says, Jeremiah 1.5, it says, I knew you before you were created and knitted in your mother's womb. I had a relationship with this, this essence of you, your spiritualness, your, your consciousness, right? Before you got a nervous system in your head and your heart and all your logic and reason and all your beliefs and, and feelings. That's the part of you that we, we access to create this, this sense of security and safety because it knows your true identity. It knows your gifts and talents and abilities. One of, the, one of our workshops, we talk about, you know, how many people know their, their five signature strengths? Very few people know those. And so how in the world do you expect to really create success and abundance and you don't, you're not even showing up with your strengths, right? One of, one of our programs called Beyond Wealth Weekend, we deal with financial breakthrough. The number one reason why people struggle financially and can't bring money in because at a subconscious level, behind the scenes, there's the sense of, I'm not worthy of it, because I'm not showing up, right? How many people don't know their purpose? How many people don't know their gifts and strengths and talents, right? The, the idea is that's like a showing up to a dinner party with empty handed. <laughs> Everybody brought something, but you didn't. How do you feel? Guilty, ashamed, embarrassed, right? So that's sort of life. The subconscious knows you're here for a reason. You have a purpose. You have this set identity. And if you don't know it, how in the world can you fully show up and play this game? You can. And so the end result is subconsciously, it's like, I'm not worthy of success, prosperity, and abundance. Okay? And there's a, there's a flip that we switch, a switch that we flip <laughs> in that weekend environment to say, no, <laughs> you wouldn't be here unless you had a purpose. Right? In school, we learned, what is this thing? 400 billion sperm, right? One egg. Is it million or billion? I don't know. A bunch of sperm, <laughs> one egg. <laughs> and let's say half of them are, are like, <laughs> ain't going to have, you know, broken tail or something. They're like <laughs> fat, whatever. There's no way they're going to get to that egg, you know? So, so we're down to 200 million potential life forms, physical forms, like you sitting in your chair. 200 million, and you got it. So 199 million people had to, like, die, not live, in order for you to be in this chair right now. So don't tell me you don't have a purpose. You don't know why you're here. <laughs> you may not consciously know, but your superconscious does. And that's the key. Once these things become revealed, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Subconscious, there you go. Subconscious like, right on, I'm safe. Because it only thinks about you. It's very selfish. It only has one thought about you, who you are, and what does your practice mean about you? And if you made a lot of money, what does that mean about you? And being in a relate, right? It's the only thing it thinks about. And your superconscious knows that, right? It was an excellent book. Um, Eben Alexander, he was a neurosurgeon, Harvard-trained neurosurgeon, wrote a book called The Proof of Heaven. Anybody see that? Read that. Nobody, really. Okay, really encourage. Here's your book. <laughs> Recommendation. It's called Proof of Heaven. Here's a neurosurgeon. 15 years operating on the human nervous system. People dying left and right on his operating table, Okay having these things, what they call near-death experiences. And him and the whole medical profession and every one of his, his uh, you know, uh, the, the, the elite of the elite in the neuroscience field, okay? Like we look up to these guys because they know the nervous system in and out. And so their, their explanation of why you saw mom or why you saw the light in the tunnel all these experiences because there was aberrant firing of your nervous system right 
That's, it, was a, it was a hallucination. It was just these fire. Well, this, if you read the book, man, he, he contracted bacterial meningitis, number one. Nobody gets bacterial meningitis. Number two, if you get it, if you're, if you're, still, if, if you're still alive after three days, if there's any way you can uh, survive, you're, you're a vegetable because it makes the brain mush. Okay? And by the third day, he had no brain activity. Zero. Zilch. And documentation proof, all these you know, elite neuroscience, yeah, nervous system's dead. Just a little reptilian, little cerebellum function, you know? And he was, the rest was all uh, uh, you know, monitored and stuff. Well, he had a near-death experience, one so vast and one so expansive that um, after seven days, he woke right out of this thing. Uh, that was like the third miracle in, in his testimonial. But I love it because he brings scientific, well, <laughs> I mean, th there's still people who know it's not, um, evidence that, hey, there's still consciousness when your nervous system is not functioning. I love it because he calls it my brain-free consciousness. He refers to this experience, what he saw, what he, what he, what he felt and, and learned as a result of superconsciousness. okay? So it's there, and so I refer to this as the director of your movie, okay? So we're going to sort of finish with uh, some of these, these ideas of um, being a good director. And number one, uh, it's all an illusion. <laughs> so <laughs> your practice, your patience, your money, your family, right? The physical realm is all an illusion. Ask Einstein. He says, you know, reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. Okay? Because our senses are just, you know, Morpheus in the movie Matrix, you know, uh, uh, Neo's like, is this chair real? And he says, well, what's real? <laughs> if you're saying real is, is sensory input and electrical impulses from your brain, then it's real. And that's pretty much all it is, right? Stuff. Our checkbook, our volume, our marketing. They're all important. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. All I'm saying, it's an illusion. <laughs> you're responsible. Uh, you're responsible for creating your mind prison. We got it that you didn't logically say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set myself up for failure. I'm going to make sure that I'm a loser and I don't make any money. We got it wasn't a conscious, logical decision, but it was a decision. You have a mind prison, you made it, and consciously and emotionally you can change it. You, you wield the power of change simply because it's already in you. Like we started our morning, you know, the same confidence, the same hope, the same trust that you, when you do that adjustment, healing comes from within. And Nate takes over. It does the job perfectly beyond any of your training and knowledge. The exact same thing will happen in your life. Miracles happen when you remove the interference and your true identity, your true source, your true power starts to show up. How do you know if you're not in alignment with your true self? You feel bad about that. Look at all the areas of your life. Feel good, feel good, not so good. Feel good. Ooh, let's, let's, there's a symptom here. Subluxation of the soul, okay? You're an extension of source, made in the likeness and image of the Father. You've got all this stuff. So a couple of, couple of tips, and then um, we're going to uh, have a little, uh, and, and I understand the question, what do we do, <laughs> right? Okay, so this will get you started, and I work with thousands of people on this, and I can't tell you the importance and the significance of these first couple of steps, because the first part of breaking free from your mind prison is to simply become aware of it, because most people live in their mind prison. It's like the movie Matrix, remember? I mean, he got, didn't know that this was an all an illusion. It's a beautiful movie, a beautiful analogy to what we're talking about. We've got to break free. We've got to break you out of that. And we're going to do, I'm going to uh, have a special offering for you. It's, we're going to do, I'm going to invite you to a, a coaching call free of charge on me. Anybody wants to do it. And we're going we're gonna to look at uh, the, the thalamus part of the mind prison. And we're going to disintegrate that. We're going to dismantle it over, on the phone, over a call, about 20 minutes. And we'll spend about an hour just explaining what happened. But the key is we, can, we, we know how to target, <laughs> we know how to start breaking these things out. But what you need to do is, first thing is this, the sense of awareness, okay? And awareness simply is sort of stepping back of aware, awareness of the function of your nervous system. Interesting, I just thought that. 
Why do I feel like this in this moment? Why do I continue to behave and act that way? So an awareness of your thoughts, your feelings, behaviors, and habits. Just stepping back, maybe at the end of the day, hmm, what was that thought that just kept showing up? Why did I feel like that? Every time I, my receptionist mentioned a financial upset, what was that about? You know, in my office, the only thing I do is want to talk to them about money. Because I know, because I talk to the subconscious, I know the subconscious has no idea what money is. But I can get a feel if that really stresses them out. How intimate, right? I want my patients to connect with me. I want them to understand I'm here for them. So what better conversation to connect than around money, right? <laughs> it affects every aspect of it. So I don't parlay that off to my staff. That's pretty much, you know, I, go, I can't wait till I talk about money. Because then now we're, we're real, okay? And I can ass assess commitment level and all those things. So you, to be a good director of your movie, right, we're, we're pulling you it's an illusion, right? You got actors, you got the set and everything. So are you in your movie of life? Are you the director? Hmm. And the director gets, gets a wonderful perspective, right? Because you can enjoy it. <laughs> you can participate in it, but never get sucked into it, right? And a good director says, when it's not going in the right direction, a good director says, let's change up the actors, let's change that lighting, whatever, and action. And that's what we're saying. So you got to be aware, pull yourself out of your movie, observe the function of your nervous system, your thoughts, your feelings, act, and behavior. Second thing, assess. Assess, I don't know if I'm spelling that right. Assess intensity and frequency. How strongly do I feel about calling that patient? doing these spinal screenings, uh, investing in this marketing or coaching thing. What's really showing, how intense is that? And how often, the frequency, how often <laughs> does this seem to show up? How often is my nervous system trying to get my attention that I'm out of alignment in these areas? Do you see that? Right? So if we, if we think that these feelings that are coming up are from our external environment, then the logical, natural choice is to try to fix that or avoid it or do something so we feel better, right? That's how your natural mind solves it. Versus, let's go behind the scenes. What are you trying to bring to my attention right now? Why do I stress out around the money? Why do I feel so bad about talking? To wha and why do I feel so good? So the duality is there as well. Don't miss that either, everyone. What really excites you about chiropractic? What motivates you to get out of bed every day? What just, oh my gosh, you just, oh, the, the emotions of feeling, you got a positive, positive 10, negative 10. The energy and the intensity and the frequency will serve you whether it's high or low, right? And the key is feeling really good, your nervous system doesn't know what triggered that either. But what that means is what I just heard, saw, and experienced is alignment with my true self. This serves my core identity, right? I want more of that. <laughs> so don't let those experiences go. Don't go victim to them to think, oh, that's luck or chance or coincidence or the Neptune's in line with Jupiter, right? You don't <laughs> uh, put your blessings and the positive things that happen in your practice to your external environment either. Own those, right? This, I'm, this, this speaks to me. What's that about? Why does this serve me so much, right? Because 10 other people in the exact same situation, and that wasn't a big deal. Okay, so assess the frequency and intensity. And the third part is ask. Your subconscious loves pursuit. It actually loves playful pursuit. Because when you're playful, is that threat or safety? It's totally safe. So one little trick is how playful you hear all the gurus and all the masters in, the, in their practices, you know, listening to Troy yesterday, he's just like, let's have fun, right? Have fun. You can't be threatened and laughing at the same time. So how can new patients and marketing, all these things, all these aspects be fun? Get your subconscious, so, so the subconscious can be like, we gotta keep you safe, but, but I like fun, <laughs> right? So it loves playful pursuit and it loves questions, but the question, it's only got one thing on its mind, what do I think about you, right? So the question you ask, what does this mean about me? 
What is this thought, this repetitive thought I have? What does it mean about me? What does this feeling that just showed up, how does that define me? Right? What, what, this behavior that I keep taking, what must that mean about me? So that's the question. Superconscious knows. We're just trying to get your in intellect and your knowledge and your wisdom in, in the game. And this, do you see the irony of this? We spend, we spend all of our time trying to fix life, create change, motivate change, m navigate change with our head, not its job. Ultimately, it's the, this higher consciousness, higher awareness, okay? So I hope you learned a little bit. Um, I'm not sure where we're at with our time, but I've got one little, little video to sort of tie it in, um, knowing that this, this, these filters that we have uh, our mind prison is, is pretty much it makes it all about you, you know, for good reason, we understand. But if all your thoughts and feelings and behaviors and motivations are around trying to keep you safe, how effective can you be to serving and helping people? How effective can you put intention and focus and energy on helping all those people who are coming to you, right? And understand at an energetic level, when you're open to that, they'll come. When you, when, when in a, an unconscious, and I know you don't consciously think like this, but at, at an unconscious level, if you're always thinking about yourself, it's hard to really expand and attract others. So uh, check this out, hope you learned. Uh, thank you again for the, uh, what's, hi, I have that much time? No way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, I'm sort of done, but <laughs> <laughs> so let's do this. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's life. So can we do questions? <laughs> so let's, can we play with that a little bit? Great. See, they told me you started with it. Okay. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about the sense of, of, of the mind prison and specifically how it might be showing up in your practice. Where, what have you seen in your offices? How can you relate to this? And we can work with this a little bit. And do we have a, like a mic runner? Anybody? What's, what's showing up for you? What's coming up for you? Let's talk about that because I'm sure there's probably some other people thinking about it. Yeah, right here, the gentleman in the blue shirt. I'm sorry, what was the, do you see any questions? Oh, okay. <laughs> He's like looking at me, I'm like, did I miss something? <laughs> <laughs> He's playing a joke on me. <laughs> I feel a little nervous right now. I'll just check. <laughs> yeah, my question was, um, you said that the subconscious does not have, it lives in the now, right? Yes. But we also talked about um, memory with the mind prison. So it does, does it remember past? Great question. Okay. So if we go back to, if we go back to this, um, if you remember the four, the four parts of our mind prison, the amygdala, right? So what it's doing is it's assessing. So the subconscious works by association. So let's talk a little bit about um, programming or conditioning. And what that means is, is there's a great book, uh, Biology Belief by uh, Bruce Lipton. Have, you, have, have any of you seen that? Okay, so in it, he talks about this, this material makeup called our DNA, right? And so, the DNA has within it frequencies and energies and memories and all that stuff. So when we talk about the little sperm, and little, right? So what we know through not only science but even spirit, these sometimes we refer to them as uh, generational curses or right? seven generations back. Okay, of these two things coming together, form fifty percent of your belief systems. 
50% of your mind prison is already formed at conception. Hmm, thanks mom, thanks dad, right? <laughs> so so in, 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 in that moment, super consciousness in our model, you know, and you get to, to sort of play with this from your beliefs and, and whether it's spirituality or religion, you know, at this, this is where we say that union of spirit being and human being begin. So super conscious now gets to play with surface and sub. But 50% of the mind prison, 50% of the filters, 50% of this invisible force field designed to protect you already set. Okay? Energetically, we also know that we call it precognitive conditioning. There's a process of about uh, six months prior to and about two years after birth that the nervous system actually can begin to pick up frequencies. Meaning there's another, I don't know, 20% of conditioning formation of your mind prison that happens uh, precognitively just by ener energy. I worked with a, a student once and um, you know, all kinds of life symptoms and life issues. And uh, during her processing session, we, we, she got, we got down to a point where she goes, yeah, I, I had that energy in utero. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, I was, I was in utero for 10, 10 months. I'm like, why is that? She goes, I didn't want to come out. I'm like, what do you mean you didn't want to come out? She goes, it wasn't safe out there. Okay, so is your nervous system functioning in utero? And your nervous system is a transmitter and receiver. Is it picking up frequencies? Yeah, well, once she was growing up, she realized what her nervous system was threatened by. It was picking up these, these frequencies because her father was an alcoholic and he was beating her mother during pregnancy. Safety or threat? Okay? The nervous system picked that up. Conditioning was formed. So her beliefs and her life issues, her mind prison was formed that early, right? A lot of the people that we work with, there's a span, usually uh, the stuff that we can remember, and that's why I always engage, when I talk about engaging su surface and sub and super, um, I like the conscious mind to be aware of the process, so uh, what we call traumatic conditioning is any time during childhood, usually up to about the ages of eight years old, the, the subconscious is all on its own. All right, your neocortex, all your reason and logic and rational thinking doesn't kick in, the captain of the ship doesn't kick in to about eight years old. So your subconscious is a sitting duck. It's wide open to pick up whatever information shows up. And it's only doing two things. Am I safe? Am I threatened? Okay? Working with the class, another, another process. Um, it was one, dealing with one of our money programs, and the, the, uh, the exercise was just right, money is, right? Money is, fill in the blank. And, you know, everybody's working with the exercise, and I, and I was working with a couple of people in the audience, and, and a gentleman pulls me, pulls me over at the end of the class, and he says, you know what? I did that program, I, I did the thing, and I wrote down pain. He says, money is pain. He's like, why in the world did I write that? But as I saw and observed you working with this other student and, and the breakthrough that she had and where it came up, he goes, a memory triggered, right, from the past. And he remembered a, a time, you know, simple request. His mother asked his father for some grocery money, right? And you have to realize both these scenarios didn't involve the person, but the nervous system perceived threat, and the nervous system only has one thing on its mind, and what's that? You, right? And so he observed, his mother asked his father for money, and father had some money issues, and a big argument ensued, and wasn't real pretty, and he realized that um, he was hurting because his mother experienced some pain in that experience, right? And the, the, the story about this one was pretty cool. In, in, the, in the weekend, we talk about these three levels, that first level of, of attracting things into your life, whether it's money, relationship, new patient, whatever, the sense of worth and value, okay? So we, talk, we talked about how, we call it the money mountain, and it simply says <laughs> there's, there's three basic energy levels, 
And this first one deals with manifestation. Manifestation. And that's the ability to attract things into your life, bring things into your life. If you're not attracting things that you want, there's an energetic behind the scenes that says, you know what, I don't deserve, I'm not worthy of that. And we already talked about the sense of unworthiness comes rooted in this, I don't know what I'm here, I don't know my purpose, my destiny, my gifts, my strengths, my talents. You do know <laughs> there's just interference that's causing you to forget. And, and a big part of this, too, is, is, you know, when we talked about this, this nervous system on one hand, oh, my goodness, we couldn't survive without it. Your practices, your philosophy, your science, your art, your techniques are all governed and geared around accessing this nervous system on a physical level. But on a spiritual and emotional level, it's the enemy because it forces you to forget who you are. You can't function normally in this plane, in this realm, in this physical environment properly if you remembered everything <laughs> where you came from. In, in, in Dr. Eben's book, he talks about how it's, it's designed to numb you down and dumb you up, make you more a, 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 an equal with your environment. And that's what it pretty much does, right? It, it balances things out versus... Higher consciousness, I want change, I want growth, I want maturity, I want development. Yeah, because that's your nature, that's who you are. But you're up against your mind system. Right? So behind the scenes, there's a sense of worth and value. What this gentleman was doing, was dealing with, was this sense of multiplication. Multiplication. Yeah. Nobody said I could spell, I just know the nervous system. So multiplication deals with it. So this, this person, you, you're right. Money comes in, no problem. I attract everything that I want. I just think about it and it manifests. Things come to me easily, effortlessly, and naturally. Whatever I want just shows up. You may be that person, you may know people like that, right? But this behind the scenes energy says it's rooted in rebellion because as easy it comes in, it goes out, right? Never have anything to show for it. Can't hold on to it. And this, this is that, is that anger. Is this, is this is that, that, this is the one, this was part of my mind prison. I was very angry <laughs> that I got hurt and couldn't play. I was very angry at my coaches because they didn't respect who I was, right? So anger and rebellion is an energetic force in the subconscious that causes you to lose what you gained. Maybe not right away, but pretty consistently. And that's exactly what his subconscious was doing very effectively, very, very eloquently, right? Mom has to have the money. A lot of pain ensued and I'm angry. I make that money fall. The association, that's how the subconscious works, works through associations, said money equals what? And so in, in order to get rid of all this anger and pain in my life, I need to get rid of my what? Makes perfect sense at a subconscious level, but it doesn't help with this. He had his breakthrough, not only, and what this guy did, he was brilliant. He was a genius. He worked with Fortune 500 companies, the companies that make millions and millions, and went in and said, you need to tweak this, change it. He was a business consultant. He was, I mean, his, his gifts could see business models and business plans where they're failing and just tweak them. He made millions of dollars. He had no issue with his worth, his value, why he's here. He knew that. Money was coming in easily. It just didn't stick around because he had this energy that says it creates pain. We broke that free, right? Moved the interference. Not only did his, he was already making those, he began to expand his gifts and talents and started training others to do what he did. Because before that, he thought, I'm the only one who can do this. And just blew up, right? So that's the second level of the things that we deal with. And then the third part, the highest level, is meaning. Okay, so meaning deals with this sense of I attract all this stuff that I want. It sticks around and grows and multiplies. <sighs> but I'm really afraid of losing it. My security lies in stuff, in physical, tangible material. So this energy is, is rooted in fear. There's the inability to enjoy it. There's no meaning. There's no purpose to money, success, and abundance. And so this is played out with those people who are, are you know, at, you know, you think I want to be like them. They got it all. 
maybe not. <laughs> Who wants to live with that at a heart level? So fear deals with the sense of my security lies in the stuff that I have versus what's in me, right? Because if I let this show up, it always produces a harvest. It always will serve me bigger and better beyond what I could ever imagine versus what I could strain for, work for, okay? And so these three levels are what we, we, we work with, and some people got all, and some, you know, this is the majority of the one. We, in one of our, our weekend workshops, uh, we do this the first night. Because it's a big one, a lot of people deal with that. It's all good, right? And it's just simply behind the scenes, what's really going on, stop thinking about your money, start looking at what your subconscious thinks about you in relationship to money, okay? So yeah, so we talked about the, the, the different levels of conditioning. So yes, it, 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 based on association, it's pulling from the past and says, what right now, what in this moment <laughs> reminds me of that, okay? And again, you can't have negative, low energy emotions and feelings without a past memory associated with them. So that's basically another thing. The first thing we said it means is that it's a sign that you're out of alignment in that area. Great notice. Thank you, God. <laughs> right? Thank you, emotions, for bringing this to my attention that I'm out of alignment and imbalance. And it's also a, 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 a realization that in this moment right now, my nervous system just lived a past experience because it doesn't know the difference, right? It doesn't know the difference from, it's, it sees and perceives based on what was previously experienced. Yeah. It's a long answer to the question. <laughs> okay, I saw somebody over here right there. Go. Right here. Go ahead, yeah, raise your hand. And do you have the mic? Mike Runner, Dr. Fab. Okay, I just have a quick question about yes. practice. You know how a lot of my mentors will say that practice can kind of be a roller coaster? Yes. And I don't know if I really believe that. And I mean, because life is kind of like a roller coaster, so how would you explain that? Great, so, so let me clarify the question. You don't believe that it has to be like this? Well, I don't like it when it happens. <laughs> That's, that's so honest, yeah. <laughs> so, so the question becomes, why is it so important to your subconscious that your practice is a roller coaster? Because based on results, right? So one, another technique that we use is if you really want to know what you believe, look at your reality. Look at your results look at what's going on, right? Going back to this last piece of the mind prison. Take full responsibility. Realize that, and, and again, this is, a, this is a sort of a, you know, this, we need a whole day on this one, but the sense of, hey, is there truly, where's the cause and effect happening, right? Is the cause and effect happening to what I think, say, and do? To me, let's go back to, <laughs> I, I don't know, I got this pyramid scheme going, I did this the other day, you're doing a pyramid scheme. I'm like, no, it's a net. <laughs> and that took her out. She's all like crossed up and like, what's your physiology telling you right now, right? <laughs> yes. So talk about the thalamus, right? <laughs> talk about the receptionist cutting me off. <laughs> that was great. Okay, so, so what do we know? 4% is the seen realm. Right? This is what your senses are picking up. It's only picking up 4%. Well, no, let me take that back. The stuff that you're dealing with in the physical realm, 4% of what exists in the universe. Okay? So, right off the bat, how many people live here? How many people live their entire lives based on sensory stimulus, based on what their senses are picking up? We said 75%. 75% of the population will never hear what we've even talked about. Subconscious? Consciousness creates reality? What are you talking right? Okay. So their mind prison is forced to look at every situation, circumstance, and event, people, places, thing, all the physical stuff is, oh, that's why I feel good or that's why I feel bad. Makes sense, perfectly logical, and we can stay there. And then, but we're also justified 
that we can't do anything about that. Whatever shows up in our practice, whatever shows up in the government or economy or, or, or insurance, we had nothing to do with it. We, we can't control it, right? Because there's the cause and effect is in the physical. The unseen realm doesn't exist. This is all there is. A lot of research, a lot of evidence to challenge that concept. So now we got 96%. And by the way, of this, you're only processing, your nervous system you can only process that much. 0,001%. So virtually nothing. Most people live their entire lives based on nothing. That's why we said it's an illusion, okay? So 96% is happening behind the scenes with your mind prison, all this stuff. So where most people think cause and effect is in the physical, I'm going to say cause and effect is supernatural to natural, unseen to seen, invisible to visible. It's what's going on at the subconscious level that is manifested in the natural. So now, scientifically, we can talk about resonant energies. We can talk about frequency. We can talk about this, you know, the whole law of attraction. BJ talked about it. I think it's his, his ninth law. He's talked about innate energy. This consciousness transmutes and transforms physical matter. And that's just not physical matter in your cells and tissues. It's your money. It's the people and places. It's the physical, tangible stuff that shows up in your reality. That's why we talk about the whole time. Use an eight to fix everything in your life because that's its job. But your connection to that is not your head. It's at a subconscious level. Why? Because your aunt, <laughs> the impact that your good thoughts and your good intentions and what you want and how hard and bad and passionate and excited you are is 2,000 cycles per second. Meanwhile, how, how often does your subconscious work? Say all the time. <laughs> uh, how often is the energy and frequency being uh, projected from you? How often are universal laws picking up and sending back your frequency? Huh. And now you wonder why life keeps showing up the same way. <laughs> why I live Groundhog Day or I'm stuck in the roller coaster, you know, the, the hamster wheel. It's because your subconscious never stops projecting its perception about you. And the physical reality, quantum field, substance of faith, I don't, it doesn't matter whether you talk it spiritually or scientifically, all it does is what do they send in? I have an obligation to create and manifest a reality that reflects what they think about themselves. So bottom line is, is the <laughs> you want to know what you believe? If, uh, one of my quotes is, is that, that your reality, your everything you're dealing with is your subconscious's best attempt to express itself in a physical, tangible form. Right? So that's why you've got to be a good director. Step back and say, okay, it would look like it's my money, it's, it's my relationships, it's the insurance. It would look like that on the physical. That's what I'm all stressed about. But behind the scenes, <laughs> there's a whole different meaning and a whole different game being played out. And, and you know that's true, too, because when you fix this thing and you feel better about this thing, what else shows up? Something else that makes you feel the exact same way. <laughs> so here's the thing. Because the subconscious doesn't know whether you feel unworthy because you're not getting enough patience or you feel unworthy because you're not in a great, great relationship, it could care less. As long as it makes you feel, as long as your situation, your reality validates the self-perception, it's done its job. <laughs> so your, your conscious, your intellect, your good your training and knowledge could fix this, and it usually does, because you're smart. But it doesn't stay, because the real cause and effect was coming down here, and the subconscious is like, okay, well, let's, I have a job, I have an agenda, I gotta make sure the reality is consistent with what they think about themselves, so let's uh, bring a health problem into play, you know, or so it'll find something. And you know that's true, because patterns exist. Okay, go. Hold you say, can you hear me? Okay. Would you say that there is a possibility of actually functioning in two states of consciousness at once, for example, in a state of meditation? And would you say that those two consciousnesses 
could communicate with each other in order to work out the problems that you have. Absolutely. So meditation is a powerful technique to sort of invite super conscious into, into the scene. Bring your director in and say, okay, <laughs> I'm running the ship. Conscious, you keep thinking about this. Belief system, you got this going on. Okay, is that in alignment with, with who we are, right? So, so in our, in our uh, model, meditation is a tool in, in that dynamic verse versus saying, I want this. I want my life to look like this. I think this is the best thing for me. Oh, and I'm going to meditate and program that into my subconscious so it, so it does it. It'd be a shortcut, but is that the best pathway? So, that, so the question becomes, is that really the best thing for you, right? Do you, is your issue really you don't have enough money? Or is it your issue you don't know why you should, you're in practice? You know what I'm saying? And so super conscious knows <laughs> what is the, the highest and best need. And, and if we're going to go there, if we're going to create change, or we're going to apply all these things that we've been talking about, you might as well do it to your highest and best service, right? Great question. I think over here, and then one in the back. Oh, okay, in the back, and we'll come up here. Is it possible for, like, if we, if our nervous system is protecting ourselves, is it possible for our superconscious mind to be interconnected with the people closest to us, and these feelings that we feel are actually protecting the closest like people to us, or is it just great question? Mind? Absolutely, absolutely. So the question is basically super conscious, and so this becomes the sense of the the uh, awareness or the insight of uh, that's why I said, what does this mean? Okay, because here's the thing: you can feel really, really angry and really pissed off that chiropractic is, is so under, uh, underutilized, disrespected, that there's people suffering and dying out there that we know that we can help, you can get angry about that all day long because your anger is about what? Someone else, something else, some injustice, something that's, that's out of balance in your environment. Perfect, beautiful. But when you get angry about they quit me, or they didn't respect me, right? Or, or, or they, didn't, they didn't give me a chance. Or they didn't understand me. Me, 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 me. That's conditioning. That's mind prison. So super conscious knows the difference. Super conscious can, can uh, assess and, and know that, that, you know, my, this, this strong energy, strong emotion that I'm experiencing right now, even though it's, 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 you know, that anger is a, is a, we don't, we use it to move, but we don't stay there, right? It, we use it to take out, fear is great too. I take people in fear all day long. Fear is a great energy. I love it. <laughs> it's so usable. We just transmute it into something that creates instead of destroys, right? It's the apathy. It's the, I don't care. It's the, I've heard this before. I tried that. It's those things that, you know, that's mine prison too. But great, but great question. Did I answer? Okay, up here. <coughs> Thank you. You've given us a lot of information about the problems, but how do you change your mind prison, and how do you confirm that it's actually changed? Excellent question. And so, this the first uh, and the first thing that that we tell you in that sort of the system is this this awareness. The key becomes. The, in the quantum emergence system, there's three phases. The first phase is that breakthrough. It's the awareness. The second stage is what I call emergence, okay? Because if, 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 if this is true, you don't pick a belief system out of the hat, <laughs> right? You didn't say, I'll pick I'm a worthless scum for 50, Jack, <laughs> you know? <laughs> this is not a roll of the dice. Your belief systems are rooted in one thing and one thing only, the sense of identity. Okay, who you perceive yourself to be. And in our system, we've identified nine. There's basically nine life themes. There's nine um, uh, roles that superconscious has been given to play out in life. And we do that in a one-on-one -on -one session, and the, 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 the goal is to reveal what that is, 
and as I said before, you, you have only one belief system. We have the dark side and the light side, okay? And in that environment, the environment of knowing self, a, a safe environment has be, been created. And so then the, what we call the activation phase is, is taking that information, now that we're congruent, now that we're in alignment, conscious knows what subconscious has been holding onto and superconscious has confirmed, yeah, that's, that's who you are. Now the, the activation, so all the techniques, the reprogram, affirmation, visual, all these different things are built on that, built on identity versus I want more money, I want more patience, I want you know, my soulmate. So the system, and we do this in two sessions and usually takes about an hour. So the system is there, it's, but it's, it's, it's a more of an intimate process. So I, I've done it before in public and it just it, it, uh, uh, sort of uh, diluted the process, so I don't do it anymore. <laughs> I do it one-on-one, -on -one. yeah. Enneagram has, there's two bodies of work that, are, that, are, that I found, so this had been revealed to me as a combination of working with you know, the neurosciences as well as my students uh, and then some sort of divine download. And then I've seen two similar uh, programs, which is sort of, for me, it was confirmation and validation. Um, we just take a whole different pathway with it. So, and, and those were also, if you look at the Enneagram, it's, um, ha they don't know where it came from. It's more of a, a spiritual, supernatural thing. Yeah, so great, great body of work. Uh, we, I'm committed and driven to applications. How does this, how, do, how can we use this knowledge and this, th these, these theoretical concepts and apply them tools that are consistent, reproducible, replicable? Yeah, so great question. Any others? We got 10 minutes in the back. So look what you attracted here today. I didn't plan any of this, so good. Is this, is this good? Is this working for you? Yes. Right on. Uh, my question is, you know, listening to your instincts or your gut feeling, is that described more as your subconscious? And because in my experience, things have always turned out well when I've done that. But should I also use my conscious mind to overcome some of that? Great question. And I would say this intuitive sense, this intuitive nature uh, is more of this, this higher level of consciousness, super conscious. Um, simply because your subconscious, although there's consciousness there, there's no intelligence. Okay, so your subconscious really doesn't have the ability to, you know, have that bolt of insight that, oh my gosh, that vision, this, where did this, right? Those things that, that you know when they hit you, that's pure consciousness sort of getting through and you know, your director showing up. And so, so then, yeah, ideally surface conscious takes that and okay, what do we do with it? Let's start journaling. And you know, you know the subconscious is, uh, you know, in those environments, that's what we would do, you know, sort of the, the sway test. Subconscious, are you okay with this, right? Or is this such a big deal <laughs> that it really threatens you? And that's the thing, just because you have a positive test doesn't mean it's bad. It just simply means your subconscious is threatened. And it could be threatened by that, right? And, it, and that's the mind prison. How many people have those insights? Those, those, wow, that's it, I know it, right? And don't move on it because conditioning, right? Amygdala kicks in, no, 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 no. <laughs> that means you're really gonna be successful and powerful and loved and, right? So, so again, congruency and alignment, make sure super conscious gave it to you, so he's good with it. Conscious has sort of worked it out with logic and logistics and stuff, and then subconscious is good with it. Does that, does that help? Any others? All right, so, so we ended a little early, and I, uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to have that extra chance to, to share with you. And again, um, what's that? Yeah, we're gonna play the video. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And I can't watch it because I always cry, so I have to leave. I've seen it 50 times. So, <laughs> so, um, uh, so just sort of connect with it. And like I said, I'd love to talk, meet it. You know, we have the booth for a little bit and uh, take advantage of the call. Like I said, we're gonna start dismantling that, that, that one portion of the mind prison, be able to share a little bit more, any questions that you have. So um, thank you so much. This was been, uh, it, it exceeded my expectations and uh, 
I, I hope a good year. So thank you again.